My background is that I'm an aerospace engineer. I have a training, I have a, a bachelor and a master's in aerospace engineering, and my PhD is in experimental zoology. In my work, what comes together is fluids, biomechanics, and design. Because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to understand how animals fly and how I can translate that into a robot that flies. What I'm trying to do with my students is to kind of dissect how that works. And in that way, once I understand how a bird is capable of doing that, how we can translate that into the design of a new robot that has, that has similar capabilities. One of the reasons why I'm interested in these applications, if you think about search and rescue missions, they're often in urban environments and they're super complex. For example, if it's after a storm, there's probably still a lot of turbulence, or maybe they have to fly through clutter. Well, how do you navigate clutter? And it's something that's really natural to birds. They can do these amazing maneuvers in complex environments like cities. And you know, if you see a pigeon fly through a city, you might think, well, you know, that's very normal. But if you take a robot and try to do the exact same thing, it's extremely hard. So I'm trying to combine engineering and biology. What makes Stanford unique to me is it's not only great engineering, there's also great biology on the campus. Everything is here. I depend on biomechanics, I depend on design, I depend on fluid mechanics. Stanford has amazing students. So you have all these engineers with all these capabilities and they only have to learn a little bit about biology, like how to work with animals. I want to connect my students to local birders who know where birds are, what sort of behavior they have, and I have this amazing high-speed camera. With this high-speed camera, the students will discover how these birds can do all these maneuvers. At the same time, a birder can learn new high-speed video techniques that are kind of simple and natural to my students. There's so much bird behavior that we don't know, and it's all the bird behavior that goes super fast. And one of the surprising things that, for example, an inverted flight of a goose, and the way it works is like, uh, during landing, they come down, but they have this really weird behavior, which is called whiffling, where they keep their head horizontal, but they rotate their body 180 degrees for reasons that we don't know. Once we better understand these really complex maneuvers, we can start to figure out, like, how do you apply this into a robot? What's the gist of it? And which aspects of those behaviors are useful? Imagine if there's, for example, a car accident, a major car accident with multiple cars involved. How does a police officer get a kind of a quick overview to instruct others to figure out like how can we, how you can help people the quickest well you know you, you need an aerial perspective and it's something that's not currently available and if we can find a robot that can just be thrown up quickly and gives this perspective then i think people uh, can be saved Thank you.